And I want to start right on that because I think that we've had so many exciting things to talk to us about. I'm Tom Newman. I am chairman of the Live and Learn Committee. And we've got some really exciting plans, really exciting programs that we're planning to have uh, today and throughout the fall. Um, and today it's especially exciting because we're going to hear all about what makes our all acres environment so beautiful. And I'm going to call Corey Carpenter, who will introduce Stephen, and who will tell you all about it. to the occupy one of the very first cluster of homes built by the architects at the end of the Royal Court. Today, the home is known for its art-filled interior and its spectacular garden. Stephen came not only as a resident, but as a staff member in what is now the building and landscaping arts department, where he helped incoming residents design and decorate their homes and supervised by the film landscaping, which looked a lot better then than it does now. <laughs> As a resident, Stephen has been involved in the Hillsborough Wheels, the Charleston West, and the first program of the Pyramids and Art Bay. He currently serves as the chair of the Art Bay and teaches the art classes twice a week. Stephen once told me that as a child, he would get down on the floor and draw and paint while his mother worked at a sculpture machine. Much later, he studied painting and sculpture at East Carolina University, and his hands were shown in 19 one man and three bar shows. In 2000, he became an exhibiting member of Piedmont Glassman. For 11 years, he was the manager of Hampton House Gallery of Art. Now located around the corner from us on Cloud City Drive. Today, Stephen is going to talk to you about our Acres Art Collection, an extensive and widely diversified group of paintings and sculptures. The collection had never been cataloged until 2017 when Stephen and Gail Truce began an undertaking which continues up till today. In case Stephen doesn't mention it, our art collection is conservatively valued at half a million dollars. That's a lot of zeros and a lot of art. After Stephen's comments, we'll have our usual question and answer session, and then followed by our sangria salute to summer. Each piece was taken off the wall. I made a photograph of each piece 
We would have come back to see if there's any information there about the art of the artist, like the gallery, where it came from. And if we decided that the artist came, then we had some information in that we could do more research on. We went to our computers and here are the resources we could find to research artist names and see if we get, if we get high biographies and artist statements about our art. We tried to determine if the pieces were donated or purchased. Sometimes we could determine that, sometimes we could not. The collection has been compiled in the notebooks. There are actually five of us now, and my name is Fisher, and I'm just going to get to four. Uh, the books are by building locations. If you have a piece of art on your hallway and you go to the right book, you can find it in, this, in one of these books. There's a page for every piece of art in the book showing the title of the piece, the artist's name, the medium, the location, the method of acquisition, if known, and the, any comments that we might have. There, there, there are two separate vo volumes having the artist biographies in them, and if there are information, then it's indicated there that that would be in those books. With such a large collection, we have over 300 pieces of art that are good art. I'm not sure. And I actually, our value is over 600 pieces of art. So, having so many pieces, there's no way we can have it all today. So, I'll just come out with a few pieces of different styles and mediums and talk about some of these things. We're going to start at the front door. I bet most of you have seen this. These are ceramic birds flying around there at our entrance. This is by Kathy Giffney. These ceramic birds are various colors and you, we have this rather lopsided vase at the bottom with the peacock on it too. It's a nice whimsical welcome as you come in the front door I think. It sort of sets a happy tone for Arbor Acres. This is by Kathy Giffney. Kathy lives in Chapel Hill on a horse farm. She's an exhibiting member of Piedmont Craftsman and she has a long list of shows and exhibitions throughout the United States as you can read about in our catalogs. Over the sofa in the main entry, this wonderful piece appropriately called Blue Mountain. This is by the late Elaine Dowdell. Elaine lived here in Winston-Salem. And she loved to plant plein air, which is painting on site, outside. She would go up to Watauga and Ash and Allegheny County. And you could see her in her station wagon and all her painting equipment down these country roads, much like this one with wildflowers on each side. And this is very typical of things she liked to paint. She grew up along the Hudson River and had a love of the mountains and was also a gardener. Outside of Andrew's office in the hallway is this wonderful photographic piece by our Aunt Robert Merritt. And this is the great blue heron of Arbor Acres, appropriately named. Shows this statuesque bird in its stillness reflected in the ripples of the lake there. Thank you, Robert, for that donation. Right here in the back of Piner Hall, you better get a good look at this piece on the screen because John Burkhart usually has his cameras sitting in front of that piece and you can't see it too well. <laughs> but it's a beautiful still life with a very hot palette of reds and yellows and then the soft pastels in the background of this. This is by an oil on canvas by Wayne Epperly. Wayne is a North Carolina artist and he taught at Alamance County Community College and he's done promotional work for 17 NASCAR uh, teams and he's also designed textiles. This piece is outside of Piner Hall here in the hallway. I know you've seen it. The name is Interior with Glass Table. This is a scene in the artist's own home that he and his wife built, designed and built this house. I think it's a marvelous painting showing great control with all that architectural work going on and then all the shadows and all the 
interesting furniture. It's just an amazing piece to have painted and put all those elements together in such a masterful way. This home is in Belize Creek in the middle of the woods. Uh, uh, Jeremiah Miller is the artist. His, he paints out in several barns that are out on the property. He is a Winston-Salem native. He lived in Key West and also Washington, D.C. before he and his wife came back to North Carolina. Evening Glow. Evening Glow is a piece that Kama Tadlock did in oil. It's much in the style of the tonalist painters. They like to show the light at daybreak and sunset. And I think she's certainly done that well here. She is a native North Carolinian. And she lives on a horse farm, a 30-acre farm with her husband and horses. And I'm not sure which she ranks in the order of importance there. <laughs> Outside in the hallway, night passage under waterfall. You see the waterfall on the right. And the people here. This was donated to us by Corey Carpenter in memory of his mother. This is very typical of Stephen White's work. These are on wood substrates. He works in acrylic mediums. There's a lot of embossed areas. You see raised areas on the canvas. And those are created with various uh, acrylic mediums. And then almost always he gold leaves his work. An interesting thing about Stephen White, his female figures are inspired by a model that he discovered early in his painting career. And I just bet there's a story there that we don't know. <laughs> now, let's go to Lakeside Dining. The name of this is Spring Landscape. This is one of my favorite paintings. I love that big sentinel right in the middle. It looks like a cedar tree. But it's a purple cedar tree, and it's contrasted against all this yellow and orange and all these other beautiful colors in this park-like setting. This is by Richard Fennell, another North Carolina artist. And he gets his inspiration from nature, of course. He has degrees in art from UNC and also East Carolina, my alma mater. Another piece by one of our own artists. Thorny Whirly. This painting is about this big, so it looks big up here. This is a watercolor. It hangs in the arbor living room, which is the sitting area right outside of the arbor room. This wonderful monotone palette is accented with these few notes of color that I find interesting. And I love the rhythm created by the petals and stamen of the flowers. That's a beautiful piece, Thorny. Don't you almost think you're looking at a Suzanne? And the name of this piece is Homage to Suzanne. It is by the late Jean Heggie. Jean was a native of Louisville, North Carolina, which is just a few miles west of here. And Jean was an avid gardener and an antique dealer as well and painted... Quite a wonderful painter. Jean and I had a show together back in the 70s at a gallery you may remember called Art Gallery Originals. Here he has certainly used the design elements that are very common in a Cezanne composition. Aren't those graceful and beautiful? Joseph Anderson is a metal sculptor. And I'm amazed at the grace and elegance he can achieve with such a substance. He says he loves to give warmth and grace to what is often considered a cold and industrial material. These hang in the Womble Breezeway on the way to Womble. Joseph and his wife Kathleen live in, a, in Stokes County next door. Hanging... Right between these two sculptures is this wonderful painting called Ladybugs on the Beach. Now, there is a story with this painting, and I'm not going to tell you today. You're going to have to look it up in the books. 
Uh, Tom Carpenter and Pinky Hayden donated this painting, and Tom has written a, has the story about these ladybugs on the beach. And there's actual sand incorporated into the paint. You can see the heavy textures here. And I just love the orange contrasted. You can't see the color well with the aqua colors in the prints left by the birds. But in person, it's much more beautiful than my photography did. Captured it here. This is a collage. Collage is of many elements by Elizabeth Davis. You, you find leaves in this. You find corrugated cardboard. And other elements are used in this creation. To me, it has... Almost an altar aspect here, or a royal sort of setting. This is horns. And this is the music melted. These are acrylics by Eric McRae. I think you can almost hear the music and feel the musicians tapping and swaying as the visual sounds just tumble out of the instruments in these pieces. Eric's a native of Washington, D.C., and he moved to Raleigh in 1987, and he's been featured in Business News, Our State Magazine, and Southern Living. We're going to Stockton Building now, and in the Front, right inside the front door in the elevator lobby, lobby is a piece called Autumn with White House. And I would just love to be sitting up here on this hillside looking down into that beautiful North Carolina valley and have a picnic and paint that scene myself. This is by Harry Tepker. And we are most, most lucky to have a Harry Tepker original. Harry Tepker was a motion picture scenic artist before he retired in Sparta, North Carolina. Some of the scenes he created were 400 feet long and 43 feet tall. Remember back in the day before we had all these wonderful effects, the backgrounds back there, of the troops marching across, that stuff way in the back was painted by artists. He worked for Metro Goldwyn Mayer, MGM, Disney, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, and Paramount. Quite a treasure there. One of my favorite watercolors. The day, a day in the life of a tree. Beautiful, beautiful light. It's either morning or evening. Very quiet. Winter or fall. Trip. Bare trees, maybe snow on the ground. Such a beautifully handled piece of watercolor work. And this is by a man who rides motorcycles and loves to hunt and fish. And he teaches watercolor classes nationally and internationally. Sterling Edwards. Sterling was born in Kansas City and he moved to North Carolina in 1973. And Sterling is still teaching presently uh, around the country. That picture is, um, that is in Stockton Building. I'm sorry, I did not write down the floor. I believe it's on first, second floor. We must talk about this because this is by another one of our own artists, soon to be one of our own, Bonnie Dempster. Bonnie hasn't moved in yet. But Bonnie's place is where the flood began, in Stockton. You've heard about that. And this piece hangs on her hallway, as, as luck would have it. As you get out of the elevator on fourth floor Stockton, there it is, right in front of you. Beautiful, interesting watercolor of amaryllis with bamboo. Interesting patterns of shadows and shapes. A wonderful weaving in and out of these shapes and colors in this piece. Bonnie's a real master at that. And Bonnie says, I just love to paint. Revelations. Who would have known? This is a, by an artist named Terry Therian. Terry's the daughter of a master stone carver 
and she grew up in Belgium. You can almost feel some stone in that piece, I think. She now lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. And here's what she says. I attempt to find balance through colorful shapes and lines that leap off the canvas and intertwine with each other in a playful way. I want to intrigue the viewers and invite them to discover the little surprises that I embed in my work. And I think she does have surprises here and there. She has some large shapes, but then she has all these little interesting remarks around the piece. Big shapes, big lines, lots of movement. Beautiful palette. Here's another beautiful palette. I apologize for the yucky photograph with the glare on it. Uh, neutral background, neutral, neutral floor space there. But look at that beautiful orange and aqua. What a master at handling juxtaposition of neutral and bright there. This is called Oranges in a Bowl, appropriately enough. An oil on canvas by Richard Oversmith. Richard is a native North Carolinian. He studied art in Michigan and at the Royal College of Art in London. You can read more about him in our catalog too. That is in Corpening on the third floor. I'm sorry if I, I'm blocking some of you maybe. As you go into Tomlins, near Tomlinson Wellness Center on third floor Corpening at the end of the hall is this piece... Gran Via. It's by Alberto Ortega. Wonderful city street scene. The sunlight behind the buildings. It's either early morning or late evening. The lights in the cars are on. So you can imagine people coming to work or going home. Nice mood in this. And it's kind of fun at the end of that hallway to have something you keep looking down and keep going. Alberto has a Master of Fine Arts that he got in Sevilla, Spain. And he now lives in Raleigh, North Carolina. You'll notice with our collection, we have tried to stick with North Carolina artists. We want to support our own and we certainly have a state full of great artists and craftsmen. Winter Shadows by Kevin Beck. Beautiful winter scene. These nice cerulean blue shadows lead your eye into the painting. And then there's a nice warm tone about the trees and shrubbery contrasted to all the cool. Kevin was born in Ohio and he now lives in Boone, North Carolina. And he likes to work plein air, which is outside. And then he comes to the studio and works from his plein air studies. This is one of eight in a collection of eight pieces. These are ceramic. These are by Vicki Grant. They're located in the Rotunda at the Tomlinson Wellness Center. They're clay. You notice in the clay, Vicki etches marks of all sorts and patterns. She incorporates beads and other objects in her works like feathers and geodes and crystals. And they're almost talisman-like and little charms, but they're quite beautiful. Each one is unique and different. And you must study those at some point if you haven't seen them. Vicki has a master's degree in architecture from the University of Maryland. Senorita. Senorita is on second floor McPherson. Sweet little girl, very pensive, looking off in the distance. Very muted background. So that doesn't draw much of your attention, but it f makes you focus right on her as she peers off looking at who knows what. This is by Marcia Thrift. Marcia Thrift is a Winston-Salem gal. She is the niece of our own Miriam, 101-year-old Miriam Harmon. And Marcia still teaches classes here about town. She teaches uh, young people as well as seniors. And she teaches all mediums. She's quite a, an accomplished artist. Another one of our own, Norm Peterson. I don't know if Norm's here today. 
Well, Norm, I'm going to tell him the name of this piece. He reluctantly told me the name of this piece is burlesque. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's this seductive leg right there coming, <laughs> coming out of the painting. Yeah, that orange, that seductive orange leg. Norm works in basic, uh, very ge geometric shapes, contrasted with some organic shapes. He says he never mixes colors. He uses colors right out of the tube. So you get this nice, strong, colorful aspect about his work and these strong compositions that have great movement about the piece. Norm donated that to us and that hangs in fourth floor ele elevator lobby and I coached him into donating it. Thank you, Norm. As you enter Asbury Place in the main living room lobby on your left is this untitled piece by Jane Filer. Jane describes her work as creating fantastic stories. Well, I'll say that is fantastic. There's a lot to read about her in our catalog. She makes all this up, and it's very typical of her work. And when you look at her, this piece, you will find all sorts of little details, people, animals, a vase on a wall, flags, all sorts of whimsy. So you can make up your own story about this one. It's in the main entry of Asbury Place on the left as you walk in the front door. Across from the dining room in Asbury Place is this very typical small town, North Carolina, and I just bet you it's down east because the artist, Kyle Highsmith, is from Greenville, North Carolina. And this looks like a little town down east. You see the truck on the left with the hay bales, the water tower in the back, and I can't quite make out what that... I've never been able to figure out what that says. The country, the little small town stores, people visiting on the street. And look at the old Texaco sign there. Very charming. Kyle was born in Greenville, North Carolina. This piece I know very little about. On the front, it says it is by I. Period Morrow. It is a past tale. And to me, that's very typical down east too. As you're driving towards the coast, on the right and the left, that's what you see all the way down there. I just love that. little. It's a little painting about that big. I wish I knew more. I can't find the artist or any information. Second floor, Campbell Wing, Asbury Place. Right across from the elevator. Spring Garden with Iris and Rhododendron. Isn't that beautiful? A riot of color. Elsie Popkin. Elsie Popkin was a Winston-Salem gal. And she loved to plan our work. She, she would be, could be found all over town with her pastel gear. Many times in Ronalda Gardens. I don't think this is Ronalda Gardens. It doesn't look like it to me. But she, she was quite a character, and you have to read about her. She was very politically active and quite an outspoken lady. Very colorful, charming lady. An untitled acrylic by Linda Ruth Dickinson. One might think, well, I could do that. It's just stripes painted up and down on a piece of canvas. Well, in essence, it is. However, look how smoothly one trans into another and there's not a straight line the gradation of color is just amazing as you travel across this piece and it's a piece you can almost hear it almost has a sound to it in my mind it evokes waves of sound to me there's a lot to be read about linda ruth in our catalog too she's uh, has spiritual aspects she talks about in her work Conversation number 42. This is in the arts and crafts room on second floor Asbury Place. This medium is paper coated with gesso. Gesso is a plaster-like medium that's used as a substrate in many works of art. 
And then it's charcoal and Conti. Conti is a very hard, almost crayon-like, chalk-like uh, medium too that this is done with. Very loosely rendered in places and very tight in others. But just enough that you can read that these two people are very engrossed in some, some passage in that book. I just love the expressions. You can just get right into that piece and make up your own story about this. This is by Pat Cook, an artist from Waynesboro, Virginia. And we learned about Pat from Doris Ann Miller, who was from Waynesboro, Virginia. And Doris Ann and her husband Robert lived here at Arbor Acres. And this is a painting by Doris Ann of her own studio in Waynesboro, Virginia. And it's a very honest, naive rendering. I just love this piece. It's very warm of Doris Ann's studio. And the name is Artist Studio. I bet you've seen this if you've been to Robinson Hall on the end of the room. This is called Aragetch Wake. Beautiful, sensitively painted, very subtle coloring in this. One might even say the light's coming down from heaven. This is by Larry Gray, and it certainly has a mood, doesn't it? I always smile when I see this piece, and appropriately so. The name of this is Happy Valley. And doesn't that make you happy, all those trailers on that hillside? That is simple joy, if there ever was. By Kyle Highsmith. It is, it is on the third floor Campbell Wing of Asbury Place. As you go in the front door at Strickland Place and look to your left, you'll see this grand sky. The name of this is Meadow Ridge. It's one of the most beautiful sky paintings I think I've ever seen. It's an oil on canvas by David Nance. David and his wife are both artists. I don't know anything about her work. He studied at North Carolina State University in the School of Design. And he says, art is like a piece of music that can take me to another place in time. This little painting is in one of our temp care rooms. The name of it is Sun, Flowers, and Fruit. And there it is. Sun, Flowers, and Fruit. Beautiful rendition of those shadows cast across the wall there from the window and the flowers. It's not a very large painting, but it sure is beautiful. This is by Monica Weber, North Carolina. We are honored to own a whole collection of work by Ann Kessler Shields. We have the whole gallery of her work. And it's at the juncture of Asbury Place and the hallway to, to Strickland. In this particular photograph, you're seeing some of her op art pieces. Her family donated to us over 30 pieces of art of various medium, mediums. She was born and lived in Winston-Salem, and she had a long and interesting career as an artist. And she developed many ideas in various medium, mediums, including three and two-dimensional. She did portraits, she, she, she did op art, and she also created pieces from photocopy thing, uh, material. There's a very poignant group of, of images that, that are about the terrorist attack on 9-11 that are quite moving in this gallery. At the gallery location, there's a small catalog about this, this collection. And in our catalog, I have a lot of information about Ann Kessler Shields. We are so honored and grateful to the family for having donated these to us. Third floor, Ayersbury Place, outside of Robinson Hall, is a real happy piece. The artist didn't title it, but we always refer to it as the dance of life. This is by Wynne Tanner, and Wynne is the wife of a former 
board member, Michael Robinson. And in this piece, I can find one. See that watch? These are, these are mosaic tiles, but also incorporated are brooches and pieces of jewelry and things that some different residents gave and, and that the artists found. It's a fun piece if you've never studied it, to stand there and look at it and study it a little bit. These mosaic tiles are mounted on plywood and, and they're in three sections. And it's quite a large piece and weighs a lot too. It was a hard one to hang. Guess who did that? <laughs> and this is the last one I'm going to show today. In uh, 2016, when the Arbor Room was redecorated, Arbor Acres commissioned me to do a couple paintings for the Arbor Room. So what do I do? I did two arbors. This is, an, this is an arbor at Rinalda Village, and it's bathed in spring color. And the other painting that I don't have a picture of today in the Arbor Room is by an arbor down at Airlie Gardens in Wilmington, North Carolina. And it is also in the spring when the azaleas are blooming. I am happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful trip through memory land for us. And I can see everybody in this room taking, making the effort to go see all of that work. Thank you so very much. I know you've got a lot of questions. It crossed my mind as you were presenting. Michael reminded me recently that in, <clears throat> in the olden ages, uh, long ago, bless her heart, Kobe Haynes asked me to be on that first art committee. Wonderful. And I, it came back to me as you were presenting, I, I didn't realize how many generations would get to enjoy all that. Was that the very beginning? I believe it was. Yeah. It would have been. And, and we have several pieces that were donated by Copey and Gordon. Too. Of course. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Questions? Right here. Uh, can it, I'd like to ask the question. To do a self-guided tour, it'd be very helpful to have a list of where all these are located. Either, you know, added to this wonderful handout or at least some kind of list that we could look at so we could go find them. I think maybe in the future, uh, under wrap, uh, under, there will be some sort of brochure made with that. These books are by location. All the work, the, in the books, all the work is in there by location as of today. We have a dream at Live and Learn <laughs> that that would be a great thing to do. Yes. Where are the books? Where are the books? Well, I've been told the books are going to be kept under lock and key. How, however, because this has been quite an undertaking. However, I've been told also that there will be an effort made to digitize this information so that it would be more easily available. And even if they're under lock and key, I've been told they would be available to you upon request, Monday through Friday. I would imagine the front office somewhere. I, this has not been finalized. I just wondered if you were going to uh, feature any of the sculpture that's around our campus. I, I, I know could it's, no way pre feature everything today. I know, I know I that, just but just in the future, I just wonder, because we have some beautiful works we do. of sculpture that I think we ought to be in perhaps a separate place. But thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I just jump in and say that we decided that we would move the books to the vault? Um, I think Ken had that suggestion earlier today. Okay. There are plans underway to make a very sophisticated, almost marketing piece about our art once some of the plans are made for the building. So stay tuned. Very good. Is the little um, piece in the back hall of Asbury the dog 
uh, the hound dog hanging out the window and the and the wind is blowing his ear. It's in the catalog, yes. It's my favorite. Thing. Oh yes, isn't that a whimsy and a wonderful piece? Yeah. In the back of Asbury Place is an old truck door, a car door. It's a it's a metal wall sculpture. It's actually a door, but hanging out the door is a dog in metal. <laughs> As dogs do. Any other questions? Well, please, please join me in thanking Stephen and do join us at the at the uh, Sangria celebration so you can visit with Stephen Moore. Thank you, Stephen, for what a wonderful, wonderful program. Gene, can you move up I want to say I want to say one more thing. This shows how everybody loves art. And our collection.